Hey there, Flosstube. Welcome to my 2022 Whip Parade. So for this video, we're just going to go over all the whips that I have in progress um, <laughs> that I have handy. Anything that you've seen me working on that you don't see in this video, let's just call, count it as a UFO. <laughs> you know, because I do have some small projects here and there that I just didn't bother digging out just because this is mostly like the big projects that I'm working on. So I'm going to start with this girl right here because I'm anticipating finishing her today. So this is the last time y'all are gonna get to see her. So let's just dive right on into it. So this is Bella Filipina's Maiden of Tubataha. I started her last year sometime pretty quick after she came out because I was very excited about her. She's so gorgeous. I just have a couple of beads. All the stitching is done. There's just a couple beads that need to be attached to her. And some of them are arriving today, so that'll be interesting. But um, here she is. And this fabric is Under the Seas Hecate. Don't expect if you buy Hecate for it to look kind of like this, it's probably going to be more blotchy. This piece just happened to have a lot of blue at the top and a lot of darker colors at the bottom. So, but anyways, here is Maiden of Tubataha. I am very happy with her. She is very bead heavy um almost like i was kind of surprised i'm like wow she's seriously heavy and i think it's because she has a lot of large beads and large treasures like she's got these little seashells uh this star starfish here was a modification i switched most of these beads to delicas by the way so a lot of these beads are substitutions this starfish was supposed to be kind of a frosted white and i decided i like the blue better i switched most of the beads up here in her crown Try and get you a little closer there. Those were supposed to be pearls, and I think this bit on her head was supposed to be another one of the pink seashells, but I decided I liked this um, briolette better because it's very sparkly. It's not showing up on camera. Let me see if I can get it to, to sparkle better. No. Oh, well, I tried. <laughs> but yeah, all I have to do is bead this bit of coral this bit of coral and this bit of coral and then along these lines here there's some beads there so that's all i have left to do on her show you her bodice so yeah she's looking really cool i love her and i love how she looks on this fabric i think she's gonna look divine i love the flowy swishiness of her tail and her hair it's kind of almost sassy looking you know so but yeah, I love her and I love all the swags of beads and stuff. So, but yeah, very happy with her. Hopefully pretty soon you'll see a video of me finishing her. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and get her put away because it's going to take me a second. The rest of these will be easier. So, but um, I also, for this video, want to go over a couple goals that I have for which, you know, you do on a whip parade. And this girl was one that last year I had said I wanted to finish this year. So yay, she will be a goal completed. <laughs> and pretty sure she's the only one I can say that about. Though there are, I wanted to finish her. I think I wanted to finish Renaissance Mermaid. And there was something else I wanted to finish. I, I think um, Gypsy slash Tribal Queen, I think I wanted to finish her too. Both those girls are pretty close. So yes, I only met one goal, but you know, I got pretty, I did at least touch the other ones too. <laughs> so we'll get this girl put back and then she'll be all nice and out of the way. And I am gonna finish working on her after I shoot this video. So yeah, all right. So that is Bella Filipina's Maiden of Tubataha done on Hecate by Under the Sea Fabrics. Uh, she will be my first Bella Filipina finish. She wasn't the first one I started. You guys will see her and then I'm going to feel real guilty when I pull her out because I don't think I touched her at all this year. And she is so cool. So I feel kind of bad about that. So I almost want to call this a 2022 guilt trip for Lori. <laughs> so, but anyways, let's see here. I'm going to pull out. This is... Gypsy slash Tribal Queen. Gypsy's a racial slur, so I don't like to, to use that term, but if you're going to look for this design, you're not going to find it under Tribal Queen. So here she is. So all I got left on her is her skin 
beads and this chunk of her tail and there's a few little bits in here too but I do really like her she's very cool she's fun to stitch like I thought the geometric pattern like at the bottom of her tail I thought that would be annoying but it's actually pretty fun I love how wild like her hair and her kind of the art nouveau headpiece that she's wearing kind of looks which is why I call her tribal queen she reminds me of the tribal style belly dancers because they wear a lot of art nouveau kind of headdress type things so yes she was a goal to finish didn't get her finished but she's pretty close so yeah but now I'm kind of um creating drama for myself and then I'm like which Mirabilla Queen do I want to finish first and I'm kind of like well you should finish the Mermaid Queen first you know but I do stupid stuff like that in my brain sometimes, like create problems that aren't necessary. Like, oh, you shouldn't finish her first. You should finish the Queen Mermaid first because you like the mermaid so much. <laughs> it's like, stop giving me my own drama. I just want to stitch on stuff. Leave me alone. Okay, so <laughs> it's funny. Down in my, my bin of rolled up whips, this one's not even a whip yet. This will be a new start, but I have like the tape put on. I have all the supplies. It's ready to be thrown on a frame. This will be a new start 2022. So more on that 2023. I said 2022, didn't I? 2023 is when I'm going to start that. Okay. This project may as well just get it out of the way. I do not have a lot done on it. This is, see which way is up. This is Dark Queen of the Sea by Autumn Lane Stitchery. The fabric is by, um, the eBay seller that I use, K Cento Kenti, I think is the username, but the labels say Crazy Hamster. Not a lot done on there because I'm planning on changing a lot of things for her and that's stalling me because I'm being indecisive. <laughs> so that's kind of her hips and her boob region for the most part. I am doing her skin over one. And that was another reason I didn't get much done on her because I think I had just finished like Maiden of Two Batahas her back there I think I just finished her skin then I got on this and was doing over one and I was like I am sick of doing over one so I moved on to something that didn't have over one I think it was probably tribal queen working on her skirt or something like that so not a lot of progress there not in too big of a rush to finish this like it'll get finished when I get finished I love this fabric though it's so pretty so this is not like a colored, like she sells them solo style, like here's the fabric, buy the fabric, you know? So I do wish she kind of had names because man, I would order more of this and I would order it in opalescence for sure. Okay, so then this is a big one. This is another Bella Filipina. Did get some work done on this one this year. Let's see which way is up. I think this way is up. This is, um, fabric is Calypso K by um, Under the Sea Fabric. The design is Queen Amphitrite, Goddess of the Sea. Here's what I have done on her. Been focusing mostly like on her tail and the surrounding structures. She's going to be pretty big as you can see. She's nine pages and I don't have any pages done. I do have one page that's close, but nothing done yet, so. I'm probably going to stay at the bottom for a little bit and start working my way up. I always say that and then I'll start deciding like, you know, I'm just going to work on a few things up here because I have this thing when there's so many page breaks, I like crossing the break because then, and, and being real careful about that because that's where like miscounts tend to happen a lot. So I love crossing the break that way from there, any other work is more likely to be accurate. Like I will not go to the break and stitch absolutely everything and stop because I get to a point where I forget what symbol was what color. <laughs> so I will take a color and I will intentionally cross the break a lot of times. Just a thing I do. Being a cross country stitcher. <laughs> but yeah, I love this fabric. This is Calypso K by Under the Sea Fabrics. I'm trying to remember to say all the fabric names. If I forget anything, I'll try and put it in the description box below. And I will link all the fabric companies down below as well. So yeah, this one, I do not have a goal on finishing anytime soon just because she's so big. Like, she's going to take a while. <laughs> but I do try to at least pick her up and get some decent bit of work. I will definitely say I have a goal to finish 
I would like to say I want to finish three pages, the three bottom ones, but which that's not too terrible because I'm pretty much almost done with the middle bottom page. That's the biggest one. The other ones aren't, they don't have as much on them, but at the same time, like I'm not good at goals and do I want to guilt trip myself for my 2023 whip parade? I don't know. One page finish at least. From then, anything else is a bonus. Alrighty then. So let's get to a Mirabilia. This one was a goal for me to finish this year. She's also on one of my awful frames, like the old, you know, screw frames. So it's one of the things I had so much work done on her that when I started using the um, easy stitch frames that use the Velcro, it was like, I have so much done on her. Like it would be, I had to buy the Velcro to attach to the fabric, to attach them to the bars. Since I had so much done on her, it felt like a waste to now use some of that Velcro when I'm not even going to be stitching on her for much longer. So she's on the awful scroll frames. Don't even know. Like I should just get rid of these frames because like I run into issues where like sometimes I have a real hard time getting because these are split rods and sometimes due to like humidity like the wood swells and sometimes I have a really hard time getting them in here so don't have a problem with that with my easy stitch frames as you see I had to work to get that that end out but anyways this is Renaissance Mermaid she's pretty close to done in that I need to finish some colors in her tail as you can see and I need to bead her. She has Boku beads, but her skin is done. Back stitching's done. I am probably gonna go back and tweak some bits on her skin. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. So when I do the over one skin, at first I would just, oh, if there's a block of one stitch, I'll do four instead of one. But that leads to a very kind of, um, let's see if I can find a good spot, kind of a blocky pixelated effect. So lately now, which just makes the over ones get harder. I've been trying to like every other, that way it blends a little bit better. And I am kind of a cheapskate in that I don't want to unpick and restitch. So I will probably go back in with a thread and just stitch it over just to blend it a little bit more. I also kind of want to smooth out some of the back stitching areas a little bit. I did that around her jawline for the most part because some of the back stitching like there was some skin hanging out in her hair. There was some hair hanging out in her face. So I kind of neatened that up a little bit. I think I'm going to go through and do that a little bit in these other areas. I know it's kind of hard for you to tell, but see how blocky that kind of looks. I'm going to try and blend it a little more smoothly. So, and me not loving over one, I will do it the cheapskate way <laughs> and just basically stitch over it. But yeah, she's got a lot of bees. Like she's got this cool choker. She's got a cool kind of like headdress. She's got some in her hair. She's got some kind of billowing around her. But I got to do more on her tail. Yeah, but she's not too, too far from done. She is very pretty. I think she's, I would say one of the prettiest faces of the Mirabilla mermaids, in my opinion. Which is why I wanted to start her so quick. This fabric is also by the gal on eBay. Kento Kenti. I also don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but that's what it looks like to me. Um, crazy hamster. So this fabric is a solo. Same for um, tribal slash gypsy queen. Forgot to say that when I held her up. So, but I feel like I've been stitching on her so long. If you've been watching my videos, you're probably familiar with those details. <laughs> so, oh gosh, these, these squirrel frames are the worst. I hate them, but I'm almost done with her. So I won't have to suffer through it for too much longer. So let's get that all screwed back on. And with these, because it's such a pain to like, um, get the fabric through the split rods. Like sometimes I shred the fabric doing that. Then you got to play with getting it all straight with that being such a pain in the butt. I tend to leave these on the bars just because I don't like taking them on and off because it's a pain. So, but yeah, there she is. Would have liked to have gotten her done this year, but she's close. So she'll definitely be able to be finished next year. So she'll just overflow. Okay, got another large piece of fabric here with no stitching on it. This is going to be for Japanese Zen Moss Garden. 
It's already got the tape on it and everything. I just, I spent a day ironing it and then didn't throw it on the bars right away because I think another project distracted me for the most part, but because I had ironed it, I didn't want to fold it again. So I rolled it and put it with all my whips. Okay, so let's get into another Mirabilia. This is the Queen Mermaid. And here she is by Mirabilia. So this is what I've got done on her. She's, you know, I've still got the fat portion of her tail to do. Still got all the bees to do. Still got the skin to do. So I think there's a few more like um, vines that I've got to do, like seaweed or something. I still need to do those. This fabric is Banshee by Under the Sea Fabrics. I have ordered more Banshee and it doesn't quite look like this. This one's got a lot more like sea foam, greeny blue, purple colors in it. And the other one I have, it's more like navy blue and brown. So just keep that in mind. If you're like, oh my God, I love that fabric. I want to get some. It might not look like this, which that's true about over dyed fabrics all the time anyways, but just, just giving you a fair warning. I do love how she looks on this fabric. I think it looks cool. So, but yeah, I like her. I wanted to finish her this year too. I wanted to finish so many things this year. <laughs> maybe, maybe next year will be her year. I definitely need to finish another mermaid next year because I got a lot of mermaid whips and I'm looking at starting a lot of new mermaids. So, but yeah, there she is. I am tempted to put her on. This is the one that also I repaired the fabric and I can't even, okay, right here, the spot right here. It's where I repaired the fabric. Can't even tell, can you? I have a video on that. So yeah, check that out if you accidentally snip one of the threads in your linen. <laughs> I have a video on how to fix that. Okay, so next one we're gonna look at is gonna be a chatelaine. So this is Misty Morning Vineyard by Chatelaine and I've got some fleece on here because the center is beaded and this is also on my awful scroll frames. This one, hmm, I might sacrifice some Velcro and put it on the proper scroll frames just because like, ugh, I'm such a snob. It's more the way the scroll frame, scroll frame <laughs> feels in my hands. Like the edges are so sharp and kind of splintery whereas this is all polished and sanded and varnished and smooth my hands are little divas and they like things to feel nice so but let me get this unrolled so i can show it to you i do know that since the last um time you guys saw this on a whip parade i did get the peacock's body one of the peacock's bodies done and i kind of struck border for the most part technically Oh gosh, see, this is why I hate these things. They're so hard to get off. Oh my God, I'm just gonna unroll it. Listen to that. That's how tight it's on there. Arm workout. Okay, so here we be. And I, <laughs> I remember when I was stitching on this one this year, um, I was like, I'm gonna finish all the pillars up on top here. And then I just got to this spot and I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I want to stitch something else. So yeah, I almost, technically I rounded a corner for the most part, because I think the very top of the design is right here. So technically I struck border, even though it's kind of a, a weak <laughs> attempt at striking the border, but I did get one peacock finished and it is lovely. And I'm so glad I did the over one because I restarted it to do the peacock's body over one, just like from here up, it's over one. It does look so nice. I'm very happy I unpicked it. At first I was kind of conflicted about it. Like, is it worth it? Can you even tell? I can tell. So yeah, but I love the center in this piece too. And I need to do, there's grapes that go around here that are beads and I haven't done them yet. And I've been real like low key wanting to see how that looks because I think it's gonna look so nice. I would like to get this girl finished. She's my closest chatelaine to a finish because you know, I've touched border. You know, all my other chatelaines borders not touched which I think I mentioned this the last time I've got so many chatelaine kits that I sometimes feel like I have more chatelaines in progress than I actually do so I'm thinking this year I need to remedy that even if it's just like a weak start typically when I start a chatelaine I like to finish the center 
part of the mandala first. Um, but maybe I will just like, come on, just get it started. You know, like, so, but this one's the closest I have to done. It's not one of the hugest chatelaines. So it's kind of, I don't know, a weak saying that, oh, this one's close to done because it's kind of one of the smaller ones. But yeah, what can you do? Alrighty. I know I'm doing these all out of order. I think last time I tried to like group the designers, but I'm just going by the order they're packed away in my little whip thing. Oh, here's another one that, <laughs> like I hate the scroll frame so much. Like I didn't, I, I don't even think I got it on the other side. So I, I need to just switch this one. This fabric is juicy though. So this is another Bella Filipina. This fabric is Bliss by Ships Manor. And let me get this undone. This scroll frame is just garbage. So and she's not even halfway done, I would say. She's mostly an outline, if anything. I need to work on her more, though, because she's purple. And technically, I don't think I have a purple mermaid. You know, done, at least. So planning on doing her skin over one. That's why she looks kind of like a ghost or like Medusa. <laughs> but I love this fabric. It is so juicy. The only problem with it is it's not opalescent. I also need to surge this edge here. This edge is still raw, so I need to run it through the serger. Maybe one thing I can do, pull her off these awful scroll bars, which feels so rough to my hands. Like I feel like I'm going to get splinters every time I like unscroll it and put it back on the bars. Maybe I can yank her off, surge this edge, and then put some Velcro tape on her. That way she can go on my nice bars. Yeah, that sounds like a plan to me. But yeah, I really like her. She was the first Bella Filipina that I started. Thought she was gonna be my first to finish, but when I bought her, it was right when I was coming back from my stitching hiatus. And there wasn't, at the time, a lot of Bella Filipina designs. There were a fair few, like, gosh, I can't even get this turned. There we go. Um, but she was purple, so I was all excited, like, oh my God. And this is Heiress of Atlantis, if I haven't said it first. She's the one, I always forget her name. <laughs> So, but she's heiress of Atlantis. And when I bought her, I was like, oh my God, yes, a purple mermaid. Awesome, sweet. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to stitch her. Well, then all of a sudden, Bella Filipina started putting out mermaid after mermaid after mermaid after mermaid. And when Maiden of Tubataha came out, I was like, oh girl, like I'm stitching you. So, because I really like the flow of her. Not that I don't like the flow of her. It's just, I don't know, it was, she was just super flowy. Okay. So that is all in this bin, but that is not all, all. <laughs> so let's get everybody put back. And like I said before, if I did say it, <laughs> I like to keep my whips either rolled because I'm kind of a weirdo about wrinkles in my fabric. Forgot one. Hang on. Let's put this away. And the next piece is a big one. This is a Chatelaine. Y'all all know it, it's Serengeti. It's like a yard across practically. Had to buy a full yard of the fabric for it to fit. This fabric is not Parkland. <laughs> I bought two fabrics from Silk Weaver for this design and decided whichever one I didn't pick would go on Japanese Zen Moss Garden. I think Japanese Zen Moss Garden is Parkland. So I'm not sure what this color is, but also I don't recommend ordering from Silk Weaver because you may get your fabric, but if you email them saying, hey, where's my fabric? You will not hear a word from them. And a lot of times when you get the fabric, it's not quite to your liking. And then again, good luck getting a hold of them to tell them you're not happy. So here's Serengeti. I love this mandala. I want to put more work into this one too. Um, mostly what I worked on were these elephant panels. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, there's these little grass huts around these little square bits here. And I'm real excited to do those because they have a lot of fun texture on them. That in the middle of this one's really cool. It's very sparkly. Love it. So yeah, this is Serengeti mandala. And yeah, this piece is obviously um, larger than uh, Misty Morning Vineyard. But I almost want to say, I almost feel like I have more done on this because everything that's in the middle is so dense, whereas things are a little bit more loosey-goosey on Misty Morning Vineyard. 
but that's also a smaller piece so but yeah I definitely want to get more done this one's not getting done this year it's too big so that's not even a goal maybe a nice goal will be to strike the first animal panel which if I recall correctly I think my top I think I want the giraffes to be up top so I think maybe the giraffe panel will be the first one I hit and I say hit not finish because I'm not trying to make myself feel guilty when I'm watching this again a year later to see how well I did. <laughs> so this is one thing, reason why I don't have goals is I don't like beating myself up when I don't make them. So if I do make a goal, I try to make it fairly simplistic. This is a king size pillowcase, by the way. And for the most part, this design is my biggest. So it just kind of stays on the bars, which I like because then I can put it away all nice and neat and it doesn't get wrinkled or anything. If it does get wrinkled, once I put it on the bars and tighten it up, it takes all the wrinkles out. So, okay. So another big piece that I have stored away in another pillowcase. This is a king size pillowcase. But let's see what we got here. Okay, so this one, this was a new start from this past year, which was a goal for me to start this design. So this is, hang on, see where my top is? Okay, tops over here. So this is um, Rainforest Lace Mandala. Fabric is Kaleidoscope by Fabrics by Stephanie, opalescent. And here's what we got. I really like the, the leaf satin stitches around the middle. I don't know if you guys can see that. But yeah, I really like it. And I added the butterfly in the middle. It was supposed to be something else, but I just thought the butterfly fit for the rainforest. That and there are some butterflies on this design. I think my goal for this piece is to, hmm, above, on all four sides of this, are a big, um, densely, specialty stitched leaf with an orchid and then there's an animal on the corner i think i would like to do one leaf and one corner for this year i think that might be manageable but yeah i do really like this piece and i love how it's turning out on my fabric this fabric's just what i wanted i wanted something that kind of had a green cast to it but had splooshes of other colors because to me that's what the rainforest is so yes very happy with this fabric I will say when you order kaleidoscope it's like different every single time <laughs> it's kind of cool and this is probably one of my favorite fabrics by fabrics by stephanie because it's so different but it's not like different in that you can't see that it's the same color it's more like the variety in it is always pleasing but you know with this one i was kind of focused on what i wanted so I think I had to buy a couple pieces of it. But the nice thing is the couple pieces I had, I'm like, okay, this one will work for this design. This piece will work for this design. So they're getting used. Another Chatelaine Mandala. And this is one that was not touched this year, which I feel kind of bad. But this fabric, Silk Weaver, again, don't recommend them just because their customer service sucks. Um, don't remember the name of the fabric. I think it was like deep sea or something like that, but this is the deep blue sea mandala. The middle is supposed to be a microscopic like algae or single celled thing from the ocean. And before I rotated off, I was like, you have to do something obviously aquatic. So I did the starfish and called it done, which looking at my starfish, like not 100% happy with the back stitching on it. It is as charted, but a lot of times I don't like how the back stitching looks on the Chatelaines because she has kind of like, she has a habit of like, it almost makes it look like you have to pierce the thread for it to go somewhere. And a lot of times the way it's angled, it's, it kind you kind of have to carry the thread too long. I don't like that. I like when the back stitch is pretty like dot 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 tucked in because then the thread doesn't kind of warp a little bit so i might tweak those starfishes a little bit i do remember them starfishes were a pain in the butt because look how teeny tiny they are and they have like five colors in them five reds you know like <laughs> it's like is that necessary <laughs> but one does never say no to a challenge i just did it so i've got to do it three more times because they go all the way around the middle. 
Okay, so Deep Blue Sea Mandala by Shailene Designs on a Silk Weaver fabric. And probably you'll probably never see me stitching on this Silk Weaver again once I'm done with these pieces. Okay, so this piece on my second largest bars, this is Fairy Moon by Mirabilia Designs on Pictureless Plus's Da Vinci. I love Pictureless Plus, but their customer service also kind of sucks, but you do get your fabric. Your best luck with Pictureless Plus is getting them from retailers. As an individual, ordering from them kind of sucks, but I feel like with the shops, they do a little bit better. But oh my God, I love this fabric. I think she looks awesome on it. And I love this fabric. It's like one of my favorites. I have so many pieces of it. But yeah, I love her. Her skin is over one, which isn't saying much. She doesn't have a lot of skin. <laughs> I am pausing on her hair because I'm thinking about converting her hair. I'm going back and forth on what color I want though. Her hair is kind of a brunette. And there's so many brunette mirabilias, like all of them. <laughs> so I'm kind of messing with, I've kind of thought about making her hair gray or like Targaryen white. I've also thought of maybe making it black. I've also thought of maybe making it gray and purple, like giving her not human hair color. I don't know. I just don't want it to be brown because almost all the mirabilias are brown. There's a couple blondes and a couple auburns, you know, but for the most part, most of them are brunettes. So while I think silver would be cool, I don't know if it would stand out enough that and her dress is all white. So that might be like too much type white. That's why I started thinking about maybe silver with purple undertones, you know, like back in like two, three years ago when lavender colored hair was a thing. Like maybe she can have some lavender colored hair. Though I don't know if that'll mix with the fabric too much. No real goals for her. This is a restitch for me. I stitched her once before. Um, I didn't care too much for the fabric. This was like 20 years ago, you know, that I stitched her and I did sell the finished piece, so I can't show it to you. It is in my scrapbook though. I have a video on my cross stitching scrapbook if you wanted to see it. But um, she's pretty big. Uh, I think I want to finish her wing before I move on to her dress because her dress is a bunch of white and it's going to be a little boring. So really I should start on the dress. That way I still like, once I get tired of like gray and white, I can move on to the wing for some color. She's also got a ton of beads on her, which I am converting to Delica's. I think she's a 32 count too. So that's definitely necessary. But yep, that's her. And I think think that concludes all my whips which is funny because I always feel like I have so many whips and then like I pull them all out for you guys and it's like where are they I think it's because I have so many pieces kitted up ready to go ready to start and I just haven't started them yet that in my brain they're whips <laughs> so yeah I've never been one to like oh you can only have five whips and you have like you rotate off each of them every week. I'm not someone with a strict rotation or like a number limit to what I'm stitching. I just stitch on what I like for the most part. But I do think for 2023, I'm probably going to make it a goal to start a lot of those pieces that I have kitted up that I want to start. Mm -hmm. So I think I've got Renaissance Mermaid and Tribal slash Gypsy Queen far enough that for sure those two can get finished next year. So I think it'll be okay for me to start a bunch, you know, because one of the problems I ran in with her was I wanted to stitch on her so much that she was like all I stitched on. Same with um, Tribal Slash Gypsy Queen. So a lot of my other works in progress got neglected a little bit. So I am a little bit leery about adding so many more um, because then I can't stitch on the ones I already have going so much. But because I'm finishing her, Tribal Queen's close, Renaissance Mermaid's close, those are going to be knocked out of the way so they will make room for more. <laughs> so hope that made sense. I kind of rambled on there a little bit. Welcome to my brain, you know, but that's kind of what kind of thought processes I go through. So anyways, that was my 2020 whips. Um, probably shoot another video for 2023 new starts. That'll probably come out in January sometime. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.